listening to. Well, and thank you guys. Yeah, it's, it's the hard work of everybody that's making this you know, become more and more of a reality, and it's it's very exciting in my mind. I think it you know having this type of system will be the game changer for the future. So. Awesome. So um, just in terms of the schedule, next up I will give us just a general overview of BioGears and then we'll have a 15 minute uh, coffee break and then uh, followed by a talk by our lead physiology modeler Matt McDaniel um, on unique BioGears model. So the schedule will be the same as the, um, as the website. I will post a link in the chat people have access to the schedule, just in case you're dialing in and you weren't aware of the website. So if you need to leave and come back, you can kind of plan around different talks that you're interested in. Okay, so. All right. So welcome to the BioGears conference. Uh, again, really sorry about the logistics involved with everything. We really appreciate everybody being able to dial in. Um, you know, it's really important to us to communicate to as many people as we can about BioGears. It's part of our mission. It's part of the objective of the contract and the project. And, and so we just really appreciate everybody um, being on board with the change and dialing in, and we've, we're really impressed with how many people um, have been able to join. So we, we really appreciate it. Um, so really quickly, I'm just going to be talking about uh, BioGears, what, how it started, um, where it's been, what we're doing currently, and then what we have planned coming up. So um, it's really an incredible project, and I, and I don't want <laughs> to... I, of course, I'm biased, but it's it's uh, pretty amazing, and hopefully, hopefully, I um, convince everybody of that with this talk. So, really, it kind of began in 2012, and maybe even before that, with uh, Dr. Brett Talbot and Tatrick um, leading the basically thought idea to uh, develop a solicitation um, to create an open source physiology engine. And I think, you know, I can't speak to all of their intentions. Unfortunately, Brett is going to be giving a talk tomorrow, and uh, I'm sure he can divulge a little bit more into his thought process here, but um, my understanding was to, that it was to lower the barrier for creating medical training content and also increasing the richness of that content. So providing physiology, realistic, validated physiology to more and more programs um, at less and less overhead so that small businesses can start integrating, so that um, smaller government labs can start integrating. And, and so the solicitation was released. So now you can think that this project has almost been in development for a decade. And it's really impressive. And I think um, that's seen through the resource and materials that are available to everybody for free um, that have been created here. So really the proposal Creation started in 2013. Um, ARA, you know, has, has had great um, history in software development and large projects and small projects. And uh, so we were able to use that and leverage some of our work with HumanSim platform uh, to develop a really strong proposal and to make sure that whatever we created with this proposal, it would be open source and that we would try our best to involve the community and to provide as many resources as possible to people um, going forward uh, so that people could have access to BioGear. So from 2013 on, we've been in development, maybe the end of 2013, so almost seven years of development um, to provide a high fidelity validated engine to anybody who wants it and to also implement open source best practices. Um, those best practices kind of go hand in hand with growing the user community. So what platforms are we on? Um, what systems are we able to integrate with? Uh, these kinds of questions are hard and they require computational thought and resources. 
And then we also want to be able to expand physiology simulations across the military medical community. And I think that um, I think that just now uh, we're starting to kind of see that. I think that physiology is being integrated in a lot of projects. Um, we're not totally aware of all of the applications that BioGears is being used in because it's open source, but I think that that can sometimes be a good thing and a surprising thing. We'll go to conferences and we will meet people who are trying to integrate or have integrated with BioGears, who are running projects, and it's always really impressive and humbling. So um, it's been a long time. And so from the beginning, we've been trying to develop BioGears uh, with our core principles in mind. And this was to create an open source, whole body, validated physiology platform that was consistent and accurate so that you could develop a scenario and rerun that scenario in, in terms of training purposes, but that was accurate so that it wouldn't take the trainee uh, out of the simulation. You don't want physiology metrics um, being published to a trainee that aren't accurate because then it takes them out of their immersion. So we wanted this engine to also run real time or faster um, because you can't have the engine running slower than the trainee working. Um, we wanted this to be state of the art. Are there other projects out there? What are they? How do we um, differentiate ourselves from them? How do we create something unique? And then we wanted to make sure to document, 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 and create a set of standards that people could use going forward. And so um, our reviews and then some of the White House policy coming out at the time was that uh, really open source software can lead to innovation. And, and I think we've seen this as we've been developing BioGears, but um, these directives kind of came out right as we began development of BioGears. And, and I think that it's really telling that uh, development of BioGears has kind of followed hand in hand with the federal government's uh, desire to see a lot of their funded software projects become open source because there's just so much more you can do with an open source project. So really the beginning started with HumanSim. Um, it was a key piece of this proposal. Uh, and then this proposal kind of followed four pillars of the initial development that we wanted to do, which was create a physiology engine, create a common data model and a set of standards that we could then push to the community so that they could have help integrating and be able to use our programming interface to create applications that they could envision. Um, we wanted to extensively validate and verify this, and we wanted to make sure that we were providing community outreach where possible. So anytime somebody reaches out to me, we try very hard to uh, connect with them, to get them developing BioGears, to get them downloading BioGears, and using it on whatever platform they're trying to do. So really, if you have any questions um, from this talk or you get any takeaways from this talk, is that, you, you know, just email me. Just reach out. I think that um, I'm always here to help. Our team is always here to help. And that's always been a pillar of, of our development. So um, please, you know, don't, don't be shy. Um, so what did we do and, and how did we kind of um, address this problem? So there's a lot of problems with developing open source software and a lot of things and ideas you know, kind of need to go through in your mind and plan for as you're developing it. So the first thing, kind of roadblock that we hit is we want to determine a license. So how do we determine a correct license for our user community? How permissive do we want it? How do we want to handle new users? These are all questions that we had to address, and I think that, um, you know, the license is reflected on the thought that we put into this. So Apache 2.0 license was chosen because we wanted to make sure that everything that BioGear Gets to, that gets developed for BioGears will be open source, but if a small business, say, wanted to take BioGears and innovate with it and then provide that to the community, um, closing the licensing and providing that for a fee, we wanted to let that happen because we didn't want to cut off maybe small business innovation that they might want to use uh, BioGears going forward. Um, and then we ran into documentation. We had to create an extensive website. We had to spend hours and hours documenting uh, systems, models, different um, 
different processes that we were going through, FAQs. Um, so we really needed to communicate to our community and we needed to make sure that we were documenting properly. And so that's kind of where the creation of our website came in. And then when you provide an open source platform, you can't just throw the code out there and say, okay, everything's fine. You need to make sure that you're automating as much as, much as possible. And so this kind of keys into the fact that we have a fully supported build system. We've spent hours on this build system. It tests building on all of our platforms that we support, Mac, Windows, Linux, and it also cross compiles for ARM support. And this is, this is, this is key because I think a lot of people forget about this, that providing software um, to many different platforms, computing platforms, is a big challenge. And I think a lot of projects run into this challenge and are constantly innovating and iterating on it. And I think it's oftentimes in the shadows because when things work, things work. Um, but it's really, it was a big problem and a, and a thing that is, is, has really led to a lot of innovation on our end that maybe the community doesn't see as much. So in terms of releases over the past seven years, we used to release on SourceForge. We then moved to zipping all of our code um, and providing it on for download on GitHub through the website. And then now we currently have all of our source code on GitHub with build testing, with um, continuous integration protocols in place. And this has been from version 6.2 to 7.3. So what are all these, um, what are all these platforms and when did we start supporting them? Well, really it's, it's always a question of who are our users and what are our supported applications? So it began on the alpha release for just Windows. So we just supported Windows. This was important for the military and private industry user groups. Those are really, it's a really big platform for them. We began testing Mac and Linux support for our beta releases and then uh, ARM architecture support was tested manually. Uh, now we cross compile. Um, with an automated server. So it's, it's kind of been an evolution to hit all of these um, platforms and it's constantly uh, an issue. As we develop code, we push code, we run our tests, we find out it breaks a build on ARM, we go back, we have to iterate. I mean, this is the process that we go through. And, and if you want to make sure that everybody has access to this code base as, as openly and freely as possible, it's a necessary step. And, and it is one that, that creates a lot of overhead, but I think that in the sort of mentality of providing the, the best open source project that we possibly can, we wanted to make sure that we supported all these projects. Um, so where were we? So starting from 2013 and going into 2014, um, we had our alpha build. Um, into 2015, we released our beta build and had our initial users conference. So it's been five years since then. So we appreciate anybody who was in both conferences. That's very impressive. And we uh, salute you and appreciate you uh, for sure. And then going forward after that conference, uh, it's been validation, it's been system development, community support, uh, publications, trying to get the word out to use BioGear. And then um, from 2018, we started our follow-on contract. And now we kind of move into the present. That's kind of where I say that we've transitioned now into discussing BioGear's present. And uh, that started with our sort of major release 6.1 and 6.11, uh, which included some new uh, systems modeling in terms of nutrient kinetics, intoxication models, so updating our drug modeling system, and then providing gastrointestinal system that had proper feeding, dehydration, starvation. Um, major release 6.2, some of the key notes were ketoacidosis, uh, updates to the energy system and substances, and then having proper extravascular exchanges in our tissue. Uh, 6.3, we introduced a nerve agent. Uh, we have better ion transport and regulation that really deals with intracellular movement of these ions. Uh, we introduced diabetes as a uh, patient condition, and then we introduced a new drug, vasopressin, which is actually, uh, you'll see today there's some discussion of vasopressin in terms of hemorrhage control. So all of these things are always pertinent to uh, military medical training um, 
And, and the hope is that the modeling and simulation, like Jeff said, can then evolve into actually uh, informing uh, the user community and people who are, who are really um, keyed in on this subject. So from there, we've had uh, even more major releases. So you can see that uh, our burn care contract started. And this is when you start seeing other contracts propagating into BioGear. So as more contracts um, become leveraged, as we become, as we become subcontractors to other projects, everything we develop is in the source code. So all of these models are in the source code. People can leverage them. So from 7.0 to 7.2, um, some of our really big changes were our full GitHub integration with 7.0. That was huge. We pulled out our Java Ant build system. We inserted a CMake build system. Um, full ARM cross-compiling support. No longer were we just testing on release day. We make sure that we build a cross-compiled version for ARM every day as people are pushing the master. Um, Override functionality, so now you can set physiological numbers to what you want them to be in case you have a custom scenario that you want to run through BioGears and you don't want um, to push off an action onto the patient. And also the big one was our build time has been reduced. It used to take 46 minutes, now it takes about 10. It's really impressive, um, the overhead on the build time that has been reduced from some of our software updates. And then in 7.2, we introduced a lymphatic system, a burn inflammation model. So now you can uh, select a TBSA for the patient. And all of this has been validated extensively. And you can see, we'll kind of get into the details of some of these models later today. So I'm not going to get into the details, but if you stay tuned, burn model is covered, lymphatic system, some of these other things um, are covered extensively. And then we began the prolonged field care contract, and you can see that the prolonged field care contract additions, model additions, have propagated throughout BioGear. So 7.3, there are four new additions just from that contract that now everybody can use whenever they want to use them. So transmucosal fentanyl, you can now give them OTFC, you can put it in their mouth, it will dissolve and diffuse into the blood. Uh, Transexamic acid, do you want to have proper hemorrhage management? Now you can, you have this drug, you can follow CPG guidelines. Uh, we have an, a more extensive cerebral circuit, a more complex TBI model. Uh, new drugs in terms of antibiotics, this goes in line with our sepsis model that is also provided. Uh, so you can just see the extensiveness of this release and how it pertains to our other contracts. We will never take, well, maybe, I, I can't say anything, I can't speak to ARA, but our process is when we develop a model, we integrate it into our master branch and it is free and available to everybody to use how they want to use. Um, and so that's always the goal. The goal is and updating. Uh, maintaining all of these models. So, just really quick, how does the um, how does BioGears model? We use a physics-based lump parameter model for our circulation. Um, this gives us properties like pressure, flow, volume at all of our nodes, and you can see a breakdown of you can see a breakdown of our um, circuit structure on our website. Um, and so, as you want more resolution and more functionality in a system, you can develop a more extensive circuit. So that is why we chose this. It also, a big part of it was decreasing computational costs. You can't really have a distributed 2D, 1D finite element model um, and perform faster than real time. So there was no way for us to really um, meet that um, goal uh, for the project without um, involving this physics-based model. So uh, this is kind of what our circuit looks like. We don't have a spatial scale, but our spatial scale can be um, thought of as just breaking out the circuit a little more. So we've done this before with the renal system. Okay, we want more elements. We want better uh, concentrating mechanisms. And so we make sure that instead of using a three-element kidney, we use um, a you know 20 or a 30 element uh, kidney in order to make sure that we get the full functionality of the renal system. So you can see at present um, the 
extensive functionality that BioGears has. And this is, this is where you really see that development over seven years um, come to a head. BioGears really has um, so much functionality, sometimes it's easy to forget what it does have. So we support anesthesia machine, nervous system, pain, chemoreceptors, baroreceptors, our endocrine model regulates hormones in the system. We have inhalers to provide albuterol support for asthmatic patients. Um, and all of this runs faster than real time. And as these requirements grow, we always have to expand our validation, our documentation, all of these requirements. So as BioGears expands, so does kind of the overhead of, of some of our testing and evaluation that we want to do. But I think the features and functionality that BioGears provides are really exceptional and, and really quite unique. And, and you can see that in this slide. We don't just have blood, we have tissue, we have extravascular, intracellular, lymph spaces, um, and we have fluid flow through all of this. And, and, respiratory, and a fully featured respiratory system. So you'll see details of a lot of these models today, in-depth details, demonstrations. Um, so stay tuned, but this is just kind of a high-level overview of everything. And um, so what does BioGears look like right now? So from our circuit structure, we then have compartments that we build on top of these things. These compartments kind of allow you to query data, ask for things from the system, and in total, we have 154 compartments with mapped hierarchy. This is really, really quite exceptional, and, and I kind of wanted to hit home here. And not all, they are not only liquid compartments. The way we've developed the software for BioGears, the way we've developed the circuit structure for BioGears is that these can be transitioned from liquid for vascular compartments to gas compartments. Uh, um, in terms of the pulmonary system. So pressures, flows, all these things are still pertinent for liquid, for thermal, and for gas. And, so, and we support uh, many compartments and many systems that rely on each different one. So for our environment, we have 20 thermal uh, compartments with mass hierarchies. Um, and then we also have urine compartments that are classified as liquid for our concentrating mechanisms. And then our anesthesia machine itself is 12 gas compartments. So it's really quite extensive what BioGears is and, and, and the depth and breadth of all the models and the construction over the past seven years. It's, it's really um, quite amazing uh, in my mind. So in addition to just the compartments and the circuit structure, we then also developed a complete substance definition and standard. We've documented these standards, and these standards come into play when you're creating new biogears and, subs and uh, new substances and biogears. So as of today, if you download the source code, you get 68 substances that are circulating in biogears, or that you can apply in biogears as drugs. And these run the gamut. This, this data can determine diffusion, it determines clearance. So we use this generic formulation that is code agnostic, it's XML formatting. And then we take that and we implement it in certain models that we use inside BioGears. These cover types include environmental gases, nutrients, blood composition, drugs, solid particulate, hormones, proteins, acids, ions. And this substance structure maps to all of these substances. So the time and care we've taken to break out what is a substance and, and what are some of the definitions that are pertinent to a substance? All of these things kind of feed in into what those data types look like. So what does this look like? We can just show you really quickly. This isn't this is a high-level talk. It's not necessarily um, in-depth, but you can see acetoacetate. To the right here, you don't need to know any C++ to modify acetoacetate substance profile. So these standards are portable. They're extensible. You could take them to your own physiology engine, upload all the XML and start using them. And so that's another key feature of BioGears. And all of this is documented. And all of this is validated within BioGears. Obviously, if you take it to a new physiology engine, we can't guarantee anything. But this is, what, this is the kind of value that we provide in BioGears and that we've always provided in BioGears and that we want to provide going forward. Um, so. Yeah, flexible unit inputs. We have a unit conversion engine. 
So if you have a value for intrinsic clearance that is micro liters per minute per kilogram, maybe you can change that to milliliters. All of these things are flexible. So this will all be loaded into BioGears. There's no reservations on the units that you want to input. And all of these are covered with extensive examples um, and downloads. And then, so some of the more generic um, work that we've done on BioGears, we have a generic circuit solver that is a mathematical formulation, a matrix solver using modified nodal analysis to solve any of our circuit types, electric, fluid, thermal. So as we construct a circuit or as it, let's say somebody in the user community wants to extend a circuit, they can reach out to us or they can just extend the circuit in BioGears and this solver will be generic to be mapped to that new um, substance you, or new circuit. You never have to go into the solver or do anything like that. We handle uh, transportation of substances and transportation of um, fluid, electrical, and thermal um, generically. So mass moves, um, gas diffuses. So as you extend BioGears, all of these generic formulations then get extended to that um, extension. So what have we done currently? I think some of the kind of exciting demonstrations, and this was presented at IEEE last year, are integrating with sensor data. So taking a heart rate and then mapping an exercise event to BioGears, running BioGears on an AWS cloud server, um, launching that via Docker. So we have a Docker containerized application of BioGears. It's on Docker Hub. You can go download it. We have a Docker file that extends that. Um, and then being able to see uh, metrics like sodium loss, sweat rate, lactate production, these things that a sensor is not going to give you, all mapped from a heart rate that, that BioGears integrates with. So these are the kinds of like future ideas that um, Jeff and Brett are going to be talking about that BioGears can extend to because of the software work we've done and the support that we've done. So integration applications like this, this was actually done by an intern over the summer. And that kind of just tells you that, that how, what is the overhead cost for a project like this? It's not much. BioGears, we've really done as much as we can, and we are still continuing to do that in order to make sure that our users are able to easily integrate with BioGears and extend their ideas and create their ideas using BioGears for whatever idea they have. Um, so just currently some of our tasking that we've been integrating into our master branch, parameter override functionality is now in BioGears as of 7.0 and 7.2, dependent, which we call um, a conformant engine, and then a independent feedback, which is a non-conformant engine. As you set your parameter overrides, you can decide whether you want the engine to be conformant or not conformant. That just talks about how the physiology um, travels with the number that you're setting. So is it a mask number or is it actually the physiology is being adjusted? Both of those are supported. So this was a record year for community outreach. We've really been trying to do as much as possible to get BioGears out, to get the word out, to have people download it and start using it. And so We've had three publications. We presented at four conferences. We're now over 8,000 downloads. We get 10 unique clones over 10 days on GitHub. Those numbers are not part of the downloads. So the hope is that there are many, many people using BioGears. We've actually tried really hard to create new complex how-to files for community references. These files now do things like dynamically run, you can use the command line to treat a sepsis event for a patient. We've done a lot to expand our how-to profiles um, for the user community. Um, our GitHub page is also expanded. So as we get more contracts, our GitHub page expands. We now have nine repositories that we support. That includes Core, Core Lite. Core is the core BioGear physiology engine, but you can just see as our as we get more funding and, and more support, all of our projects are being um, supported open source to the community through our BioGears project page. This includes through our prolonged field care project, a Python learning record store that we ported to Python 3, 
an assessment web portal using Django, framework library for communications, um, paper data for peer reviewers. So all of these things just show that we are always trying to expand what's available to the community and it's not always just BioGears. Sometimes it's things like networking or assessment pages or things like that and this is all provided free um, with the proper licensing. So um, we just want to make sure that everyone's aware of that. So going forward, uh, we're going to have a state machine framework where we will expand our generic scenario definition language to support parallel simulations and branching. How do you want a hemorrhage event to be treated? You'll now be able to map that into an XML format without needing to know any C++. Anybody can go into one and just say, okay, I have a patient, one patient gets treated, one patient does not, simulate for 30 minutes, okay, now one patient gets treated, another patient does not, and how does that progression look? You'll be able to do all of that without touching C++. So this will be available in the summer. Um, our user interface is currently being developed. You can go on GitHub, download our code, build this and run this. This is being developed with Dr. Thomas Talbot who's speaking tomorrow. He's done a great job of helping us design this. Think of ideas. We want it to be easy to use, broadly adaptable, contain our releases so that you don't need to build BioGears. You just download the user interface. It comes with a copy of the BioGears with the download. Um, our 1.0 release will be expected in the summer, but again, we develop everything on GitHub. Everything is on GitHub already. You can download, clone the project, and start developing on it if you um, so desire. Um, our light release is developed for lightweight user applications and modularity. We want to make sure that we run at or faster than real time on microcontrollers and mobile devices. So this speaks to sort of what uh, Jeff was saying that sometimes you don't have access to the internet, but maybe you do still want a physiology simulation that's showing you different treatment options. Maybe that simulation could be directly on your phone. If you don't need that much computational overhead, that's a possibility. Or maybe you want your phone to simulate every warfighter in a group or a squadron or everybody in a city. Things like population level dynamic simulations. The hope is that BioGears Lite can meet that. We already have this project on Masters. There's been a ton of development on that. It's already 40% faster than our master branch with limited decrease in functionality goes faster than 10 times real time. You do lose some of our models, um, but to, you know, some of the core features and functionality are still there. Uh, burn care is coming out um, soon. This will be a free application through the Google Play Store using our burn model in order to train for uh, some of the unique complications of burn physiology. Um, and then just in the future, what do, we, what do we expect to be doing? You can, as, and Jeff kind of um, spoke to some of this, in terms of global pandemic simulations, maybe you want a physiology simulation associated, instead of just saying that somebody is sick, maybe you actually want to simulate that person's physiology. So integrating a global pandemic simulation with an individualized physiology metric could be game-changing, things like multiple, uh, mobile platform, tactical planning applications, how do you want to deal with C-burn exposures, how do you want to deal with a mass casualty simulation. All of these things uh, could be possible with BioGears and are just kind of some interesting ideas that I had. <laughs> um, digital twin monitoring, so Jeff also talked about this, I think this is great. Um, taking a sensor that maybe you only have a little bit of ground truth for, something like heart rate, because all of these sensors, some of them are doing approximations to tell you certain things, but things like heart rate have pretty solid ground truth, but maybe you want to know more extensive information about the patient. So taking that ground truth heart rate information, integrating it with a BioGears patient-specific physiology simulation of that warfighter, and then projecting the curated piece of data, like Jeff said, you don't want to overwhelm a caregiver, but projecting that curated piece of data onto your mobile application to let them make really solid decisions about the health and care of that patient um, would be a really interesting application as well. So what's coming up in 8.0? These are things that are already happening. So there will be a sleep model that will scale with metabolism. 
So how long has your patient been um, awake? How is that affecting their physiology? Things like alertness data requests will become available. You'll be able to say, okay, contextually, how are they doing? Are they going to be able to fire their weapon? Are they going to be able to do the tasks that I'm giving them? There will be some scaling there. Um, acetaminophen or Tylenol for pain management. This will be an oral drug. Atropine in collaboration with the Google Summer of Code. We are getting an intern and we're hoping to extend the BioGears drug library there. An updated nervous system combining sympathetic and parasympathetic responses into one signal so that uh, drugs behave a little bit better, so that um, other systems get validated a little bit better. And then hope, we hope to be able to hit um, an updated metabolism so that we can validate exercise and blood glucose just a little bit better. We have this already. We're just trying to, you know, BioGears is always an iterative process. So uh, as we go back, we identify things that need to be updated, that need to be revalidated as we go forward. Um, and just really thanks to everybody, our contracts, our team, everybody who's been involved with us from the beginning, um, USAMRA, ARL, TATRIC, um, USISR, we're hoping to work with Madigan in the future. Um, all of the users and university users, all of our small business users, everybody is really important to us. We always uh, want to take the time um, to address them, to provide for them, and to give them um, a really unique piece of software for free. Um, so. That is the, always been the core ideals of BioGears and will be going forward. And so I really appreciate everybody being here and, and kind of seeing the extent and where we're planning on going with this. So if anybody has any questions, uh, just feel free to um, talk in the chat. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks, Brett. I appreciate, um, I appreciate you saying that. Um, so if, yeah, if anybody has any questions, let me know. I'll unmute you. Otherwise, we will be going to a 15-minute break. We're behind a little bit. Sorry that I went over a bit. Um, anybody? Okay. Thank you. And we will meet back up. Um, We'll meet back up in 15 minutes where Matt will be going into a little bit more in-depth technical details on some of these um, models that I covered uh, here. So looking forward to it and I'll see everybody. We'll meet back up at uh, a little bit before 11. So we'll say 10.59. Thank you.
hello. Can everybody hear me? People are muted. They can't answer. They can answer in chat. Hello, if anybody could just uh, spam in chat that they can, that they're hearing this, uh, that would be great. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good to hear. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I moved rooms, and so that we're all together now, and uh, just wanted to test everything. All right, we'll, we'll start with Matt in about... Few minutes. 